Welcome back to the Spin and Backfist MMA show. It is Robbie Fox, Jack Mack, and Big Ev, and we are here with Megan Anderson, head of the premiere of Extraction 2. Hello. MMA fans might be like, wait, I remember her from MMA. What are you talking about? Movie premiere. Right. You're in the new Chris Hemsworth movie coming out on Netflix. The first yeah. one was awesome, Extraction. An awesome just like action movie, kind of a throwback action movie to yep. like what people love about just pure action. Now the second one, we haven't seen it yet because it's not out yet. We have a coworker that got a screener. And he has been hyping it up all month. So I haven't seen it either. Oh, you haven't oh, even wow. seen the final cut? No. Unreal. So, Our no. coworker that saw it, Ken Jack, he does a movie podcast for Barstool. When he saw it, he was actually told he was like the first person outside of the crew to see it. Oh wow. When did he watch it? Like a month ago. Yeah, a ago. Oh wow. Yeah. Like I uh I don't know, like obviously I c I know my parts, yep. but um I have like a vague idea of like what it's gonna look like because obviously being there I've, I've read the scripts all that kind of stuff but um like one of my good friends who is a double was able to see a um like a screening when they were doing reshoots like a rough screening of reshoots early this year and he was like it looks really good and then obviously they've you know that i think they've done spain germany prague for like um premieres so far and like they're coming to new york and um the like the the one in Prague like because we filmed there we filmed in Prague and Czech Republic and Vienna and Austria and it's like all of the like the assistants and, and the crew and all that kind of stuff that were working it like messages they're like oh my god it's amazing like it's it's just so action packed like that is like the theme is like it's just a ball the ball action pretty much I love that <laughs> which I'm like not mad <laughs> how do you get involved in it in the first place so crazy story um they messaged me on Instagram wow like so we were their film is originally supposed to be filmed in Australia and so they I think Sam Hargrave who was the director had just flown to Australia and um they were thinking like hey like why don't we get in you know bring bring a you know a woman in they can kind of fight be in some of the, the big fight scenes type deal and they're in australia so obviously like my name popped up so like someone like way down the line on the stunt team instagram messaged me <laughs> when so my other i thought it was fake i was gonna say yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a bot it's yeah. one of those bots yeah hey, do you want to be in the new chris hemsworth movie yeah. You're like, like who says that yeah sure <laughs> so i i thought it was fake and they um I, I didn't respond for like two weeks, <laughs> but like it kept like for some reason I kept thinking about it. I was like, you know what? Like I'm just gonna reply. If it doesn't end up, you know, working out, don't lose any sleep. If it works out, I'm like, this kind of a cool thing. If it's legit, so very cool. Scrolled through two weeks of like <laughs> other messages, found it, replied back to them, and then I, you know, gave them my email, talked to like you know, somebody a little higher on the stunt team. And then the next thing I know, I'm on a Zoom call with Sam, the director. I was like, oh, so this is le like legit, legit. Like this is real. <laughs> You're getting cast, yeah. Um, and then like obviously went back and forth. And uh, at the time, Sydney in Australia where they were going to shoot it, um, they were like in and out of lockdown. Like it was a nightmare. Nobody could get in the country still. So they ended up moving it to Prague in the Czech Republic. And I went I went out there like end of September of 2021. And then it came back mid-December, Christmas, New Year's here. Went back over there 3rd of January to like the 4th of April and was there the whole time. That's crazy. So now obviously as the, you're doing the fight scene and stuff, are they like leaning on you as the pro fighter to like – with the choreography or like teach the actors like this is how you so know, like a punch actually look or like this type of move like how much are they leaning on you for that kind of stuff not a lot like they utilize a lot of the you know my fighting style in the choreography but like fighting and film fighting is so different um like obviously when you're fighting like everything's tight mm. like you don't want to have like any space to get counted whereas like film i'm throwing a hook from my fucking like <laughs> 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 like but, like it's it's like making it look good for camera and like you almost need to telegraph right so the audience scene, can see like, things this coming far apart like yeah we're not super like there is no way that you can like hit them i mean obviously you like, don't want to do a mcgregor heat mascot <laughs> not you gotta pull your punches dude bro like i seen that I w and i was like in my head i was trying to like 
rationalize it because I'm like, this has got to be fake, right? Like they, this is obviously like pre set up, but I'm like, why is he hitting this mascot so fucking hard? The second shot was. The was like, shot was. Oh, nice. was I'm a little, vicious. I'm a little woke to it though. <laughs> I think. You think the mascot was in it, on it? No, like in terms of the hospital stuff. It was. They were promoting something because he had something in his hands. The and he was spray. Spraying. Yeah, it's McGregor uh, spray. And I, oh, it's, it's, it's uh, the title. title? Yeah. yeah. And then I think I wouldn't be surprised if they were like, "All right, we'll send the mascot to the hospital," quote unquote. Uh. And I think all they the Dude, mascot everywhere, everywhere's picked it up. Yeah, it's yeah, massive. Like, what? It's but going I on. guess the only thing the guy got in the hospital was just they some gave Tylenol. Him Tylenol, <laughs> yeah. Tylenol sent him home. So that's also he like just had yeah, that at home. Yeah. Or even they were in. The heat arena. I'm sure they had Tylenol there. <laughs> but if you get pun- if you're the mascot, you get punched by McGregor. It is a cooler story to say McGregor sent me to. Oh, the I, hospital. I, I, my okay. mind would go straight to dollar dollar signs. Oh, it's like, True. Yeah. Cha ching. Cha ching. Yeah. It's like the um, the photographer uh, who's yes, Devonte the- Adams. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Like he pushed at the oh, end. Oh, I remember yeah, that. It was I, like uh, yeah. back in September. I, yeah. Yeah. It was against the Chiefs. Yes. Yeah, that's why I remember. He's like, oh, whiplash. <laughs> oh, my neck. So, yeah, it's the Soprano <laughs> scene. Like, yeah. Any given Friday, they or, uh, no, um, any given Sunday, I meant they do yes. that too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, push him down. In the, the, and he's, he's like, you get that? You get that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as far as pulling punches, though, yes. like, is that just a matter of you're so far away from each other that, like, there's no opportunity to hit each other or was that a thing you had to actually watch for? Um, bit of both. Like it just depends on like the camera, like the, is it, is it for, you know, for the first or second team? Um, because like one's like more close up, one's more like widescreen, um, like angles, whether you're over like his shoulder, over my shoulder, over, you know, different angles. So it just depends. And like, they might like get you to like, mix up the punch or the angle like just depending on the camera and, and what they're looking for um so yeah like sometimes it's like for the most part we're not super close and like but i mean anything could happen they could like take that one step in yeah <laughs> like they're right there but i think that's like the difference with me is like i know how to range control so i was yeah. able to kind of like make sure to manage that i can't like, let you get close yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like and, and if i seen like you know the 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 other actor who I was in the scene with. If I seen him kind of like inching a little too close, like I'll like still wing my punch wide, like like make it look good and stuff like yeah. that. But I'll, I'll kind of bring it in close, so it's like the chances of him me like accidentally hitting him is like removed. Were the other actors you were with? Did they have kind of a fear when they were assigned with you? Kind of just out of I mean, it would be a false sense of. Not feeling secure. Well, the but capability, I, I feel. Yeah, like that's at least. yeah. Like if if you're with an average stunt person, I don't know if they're throwing punches like with the ability to actually just put you out cold. I mean, I feel like a lot a lot of the stunt guys like they former like, fighters. Legi- I mean, maybe not former fighters, but they train. Oh they yeah, they sure train like do jujitsu, that makes like, sense. Boxing, all that kind of stuff. They're they're like very very good, and like their ability to s- their ability to too. sell. Yeah, like, that's uh. it's like top tier. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I didn't really talk to Adam about that because he was the guy that I, I did my, my fight scene with. He's one of the male leads, Adam Bessa. And um, one of the one of the things like that we spoke about before going into this fight scene was like we wanted it to like be look real. Because like sometimes, you know how like you, you watch fight movies and it's not realistic. Yeah, it looks it's like, like they're doing a dance. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, as much as I love, like, John Wick and all that kind of stuff, having one guy, like, fighting a million people and, like, not really <laughs> getting injured, I mean, the real, like, realistically, that's <laughs> probably not going to happen, but, I mean, love the movies. Uh, sick, yeah. So, one thing that we wanted to do is, like, we wanted we want it to, to be ugly. We wanted it to look like an actual fucking fight, and so, like, I hope, fingers crossed, from what I hear, and I hope <laughs> when I watch it, like, we, we brought that and it's portrayed across on the screen. Well, that's Ken Jack did okay. confirm. He's sure. like, your fight scene was sick. A staircase scene, he, he mentioned. He's like, very awesome. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> You'll have to check it out. You'll yeah. have to check it out. Uh, June 16th on so Netflix. The pre- <laughs> premiere in New York is tonight as well. Right before we yeah. started recording, you said you're very nervous. F- are you nervous for just watching the movie? Is, are you nervous about the red carpet and the interviews? Are you nervous about how people are going to perceive the movie? What, what are the, where are the nerves from? Um, g- kind of like a bit of like, yes. All okay. Of the above. Okay. Um. Obviously, red carpet. Like, this isn't like a regular red carpet. This is like a black tie, 
red carpet, mm-hmm. like floor length dress. I'm like, I have to like, firstly, a finding a dress long enough for me is <laughs> like yeah. a nightmare. <laughs> and then I found a dress long enough, but it's so long that I have to kick the dress out oh. with my oh. shoes so I don't trip over it. I'm like, do you need one of us to be like the guy <laughs> with the yeah, train? Yeah, with the bus. <laughs> <laughs> follow you and hold it in the back. <laughs> Too kind. Um, but uh, so there's that, and like. You know, obviously a lot of lights, cameras, all that kind of stuff, which I mean, I'm okay with, but I'm also like, I'm an introverted person at heart. And so I don't like a lot of like attention because I'm like, uh, like I just want to like be at home watching TV. You want to, you want to just watch the premiere on Netflix. For big facts. Yeah. But um, <laughs> there's that, but also like the reception of like, I don't, like I'm nervous because I'm like, I hope people like it. Like I know I'm gonna like it. Cause, like it's a big achievement, all that kind of stuff. But it was. It's more of like if people like people hating on it. I'm like if people. But then I think about. It, I'm like if people are gonna hate on me for my performance in this movie, or whatever. It's the first time I've ever fucking acted yeah. in my life. I'm like, and if you are like hating on somebody who's doing this for the first time, you're just a fucking loser. Fact. Like respectfully but also just or jealous that you're in like this huge blockbuster movie <laughs> yeah but i don't know i'm just we everyone it's not just myself but like everyone the whole team stunt team crew like w- it was such a phenomenal experience and we put so much like soul and heart and like dedication into like this movie um from start to finish and i think just wanting that final product to look amazing yeah that's kind of like that's that's kind of like the whole crux of like the nervousness is like just wanting it to come out and everyone enjoying it and so just for context like for i just go back to like for like a fight scene, like how long from beginning to end does that take at least for you you're like like how long are you on set is it multiple days like yeah. one day for one for one scene or multiple days for one single scene or like how long does it take yeah so say, say, say for like one fight scene yeah, it's like multiple. So mine, it was multiple days. Um, so there's first unit, second unit. So first unit is like main director, um, close. It's all like kind of like waist up type shots. And then second unit is more like wide, like full body, different angles type thing. And um, so I probably did about for my like three to four full days. Um, wow. That's with like hair, and makeup costume getting on set and like it's so crazy because like you rehearse this fight scene beforehand right and you go through it and go through it go through it till you know it and then it's so amazing how they break it up into like these small little pieces like you don't ever just do like obviously you have your oneers which like chris has, has talked about that the a super lot. long one this yeah. one right like 20 minutes yeah which crazy I, d- I didn't get to see that being filmed but i was like damn well, that's like i i have i had my own um that you may or may not see in the movie Ooh. um but for the f- for the fight scene it w- we didn't have a one but like they the way like you you were doing like maybe five seconds of the fight at a time oh wow. that's like and like you 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 tape like you do like multiple takes of like that particular segment and then they're, they're like okay cut we're gonna go to the next did you like that fight. did it feel did it like throw off the way you learned it so it was um uh, like i was prepared for it because like obviously yeah. I, I talked and, and they'd kind of like let me know like the, the other actors and stuff like that but preparing for it and like having it happen it's so different because like you have to keep that intensity the whole fucking day and um when you I'd, I'd like doing snippet to snippet but like that one snippet you might do that like five takes yeah until like they get the exact fucking like take that they want how draining are those days it's it's exhausting all right is it like comparing it to some of your hardest training sessions what it, was it a similar feeling at the end or it's, it's more of like the longevity because gotcha. like i'm like training right hard training session preparing for a fight like oh, an hour you know an hour of drilling and then yep. you got five five minute rounds i mean it's it's tough like you're cutting weight all that kind of stuff it's just different though because like you're doing this all day and like you're throwing punches looking like you're throwing them with 100 percent, but you're not landing on anything like ah. you are having to keep that up intensity and like there's like this there's this like one part of our fight of, of our fight scene which 
I can't say too much. No but spoilers. Like, yeah, no spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> like we're kind of like Adam and I are like like nose to nose, like kind of like in each other's faces, and like that um, that raw aggression of like your will against somebody else's in like a controlled environment. That's like like it's like having that intensity like for multiple takes all day yeah. like it's it gets tired having like it's i'm gonna so kill you intensity or yeah. you're gonna kill me intensity Well, because it's like essentially we're trying to kill each other yeah like so it's the intensity of that it's like it gets exhausting and like a lot of people don't like realize like it, it's taxing and i mean you don't have like a f- like official like lunch breaks or this break yeah like, you eat in between takes i see those can. schedules of actors and I think to myself, oh, my God, because they'll, they'll be on set for 12, 14, 16 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. And I just imagine like how tired I would even be if I had to do that once, let alone a whole <laughs> movie. McGregor right. said about Roadhouse to me, he said acting made everything else feel easy. Oh, That's yeah. It's so different. Yeah. Like 100 percent. And I'm sure like he he probably had a lot more like longer days because like, he has such a, a prominent role in the film. But um, it's just. Like that's that's why there's like um, th- there's like a like a schedule in place that like after X amount of hours or days in a row, like you have like it's like on you know, you know the was it the guild or something guild, like yeah. they oh, they make yes. you have it's take like a break. It's like you have to like take yeah. a break. It's like yes. under the it's like union, the union like thing. That. Yeah, it's union. Yep. Yeah. SAG was it SAG? Yes. Yeah, Screen SAG Actors Guild. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like compulsory, like to make sure that because. W- we were doing like a lot of like long long days and like some some of it it's like light dependent so when we we're in vienna oh, yeah. it was light dependent so like when the sun set we couldn't film anymore oh. but when we were doing the fight scenes it's like indoors so we went as long as we needed to to get the shot the whatever, shots yeah. that we needed to that day that's so crazy yeah. is I this imagine having me so intense you're just flipping the switch on and off on and off all day yeah. long is this like, something that you want to pursue now in the future, acting, or even like I don't know if you've ever considered pro wrestling, but I figure like choreography in terms of stunt stunts and stuff could lend itself to that. Yeah, I mean, I always like I always thought like if I like I w- I would transition to to WWE. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I love it. I've you know been a big fan of it my whole life. Randy Orton. <laughs> So oh yeah, favorite. he's my favorite too. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's my the 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 goat. Right? No, what big backs? Uh, but no, he, 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 you know, and a lot of the women like uh, uh, Beth Phoenix like yeah. inspired me, and particularly like, obviously, I didn't grow up, you know, normally like like other people being six foot tall. <laughs> yep. So like having strong women like that. You know, be able to kind of shake it. Like R- Rhea Ripley is now. Like yeah, you know, she's crushing it. <sighs> the biggest girl she's crushing like her. She's like honestly like one <laughs> of the best in amazing. the company right now. Right, and the fact that she's Australian too, I fucking love it. Yep. Um, but you know, I I thought like I would want to transition over, but like it is such a physical sport. I'm like, I don't know if my back could take it. <laughs> my back it's crazy. My Randy Orton's it. currently like inactive no, because he he's got back injuries from the RKO. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, he had a long career. Yeah, he's I mean, it's 20 it? years of doing the RKO, throwing yourselves on your back, you know, over and over, 300 nights a year. It'll this add 300 up. nights a year thing is, yes. that schedule is just insane. Yeah. It, it almost it really is, is very, it's comparable kind of to the the movies. Oh, yeah. 100%. Because you're going, but there's more travel. At least you've got to drive f- yourself fact, everywhere. Like, I know. Just traveling, like, for, for work now, like, People don't understand, like, when you travel like that, the time zone changes screw you over yes. so much. Like, you, your body just gets so exhausted. And, yeah. like, you might not do anything, but, like, constantly going back, like, an, going forward an hour, going back two hours, like, forward an hour. Like, it, it screws up your body so much that, like, add on, like, going out there and, like, wrestling. Being on for the for crowd. For a, know, yeah. like, a whole, and being on, yeah, exactly. It's, like, that shit's fucking exhausting. I'm, like, nah, maybe I don't Maybe like stick to the movies. Yeah. Stick to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can look like I'm getting beat up, but I'm not actually getting beat up. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> no, that, I mean, that would be... If you if you could stick to the movies, that would be the ideal route. I think most wrestlers want to transition to the movies eventually. Right? Yeah. It's, it's like, like you just skipped a path. Finding the balance. Yeah. Like in between, but no, it was a it was a 
great experience. And when you think about it, that like not a lot of like MMA fighters have been in films. So it's, it's kind of cool to be able to be one of the, you know, the few that have. Yeah. Do you still like watching MMA? Still like Yeah, well, I mean, I, I watched it a lot. Cover it, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, I do a lot of the tape study, um, watch the fights when I can. I would say, like, I will say because I do so much tape study now um, that I don't watch as much anymore because, like, during the week, that's all I'm doing yeah. as well. It's like it gets to the You don't watch I'm live like, as much, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I don't watch, like, I- if there's certain fighters on the card that I'm really, like, you know, interested in or I'm, I'm interested in that particular fight, like, I'll watch it and, you know, obviously watch the pay-per-views and stuff like that. But um, sometimes it's, like, it's finding that balance of, like, sometimes you just don't want to watch fights because that's all you do. Yeah. Like, sometimes you just need a break. And, like, when you've got to, like, do it for work as well, it's so different. Because I'm, like, it's not just fun anymore. Mm. It's kind of homework. So like, yeah, because I'm, like, when I watch fights, I'm, like, I'm looking at styles, fighters, um, breaking down, like, the things that they do well, the things that they don't do well, the things that, you know, that they are susceptible to. Like, you know, say he's, he's heavy on the lead leg. You know, this is what's going to be great for him. Or, like, you know, and then watching his opponent – you know, against different fighters and how their styles, like it's like the depth that you go into um, is so different than when you're just like casually watching. Yeah. You're not watching to enjoy a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes like I will, but um, yeah, it's just sometimes you just need that break. Yeah. That makes sense. Is it like the Izzy's and the Australian fighters of the world that can break you out of that almost? And like, can you still get like emotional for them at least? Uh, yeah. Um, it's just like, we're such a small contingency, yeah. um, in, in the, you know, the UFC and in, in the, the U S in general, like no matter what promotion, like there's not a lot of us. Um, so seeing, you know, the Australians and, and the Kiwis succeed is always really great. And I mean, like I, I'm cool with the with the guys from city kickboxing i've yeah. interviewed them a couple of times we fought on cards together so it's always cool to see how everyone bands together from that region it seems like yeah and like i mean fuck i fought on the same card as like alex back yeah. in australia before we both you know moved to the or you know moved our careers to the u.s and um like i mean i remember watching going and watching him when he first won the Rochambeau like title back in 2013 wow like so i've been following these guys for so long so it's like all the way to now like considered like pound for pound number one by a lot of people dude he is firstly a cardio fucking machine yeah Yeah. i'm very jealous (laughs) i'm like that man does not know how to slow down but um he's just seeing the trajectory that he's kind of gone because like I, we fought on UFC 232 together. He fought Chad Mendes and knocked him out and everyone was counting him out. So like, Oh, it's Chad. Chad's got yeah. power. I mean, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Chad's phenomenal. Fighter, Legend. But yeah. I'm like, no, I was like, you guys don't realize how fucking legit Alex is. And from then, and I remember when he first fought Max, um, also a huge fan of Max. And the only time I will ever go against Max is when he fights Alex. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like when he fought, first fought Max, everyone was just like, oh, who, who the, you know, who the hell is, you know, this guy, he doesn't deserve a title shot. I'm like, firstly, he's on an insane fucking win streak and his only loss was at welterweight. Yeah. Um, so firstly, no, but then, um, like nobody really knew who he was and for so long he was just hated for absolutely no reason. Cause like if you meet Alex he is one of the most genuine, down to earth, nicest, you know, person you will ever meet. And he cares a lot. He's hardworking. And so to, f- to see him finally get the respect and the recognition and the support um, is like awesome to see. And, and not just him, but, like all the guys, you know, Israel, Dan, um, you know, Carlos is coming up through yeah, the like, really heavyweight is. rankings. Like, it's just seeing seeing them all like succeed and and, and succeed well and, and gracefully. It's just and get this that support. I mean, you gotta gotta be happy. Absolutely, for, for it's well deserved, sure. long overdue. Yeah, yeah. No, Australia is in a great spot. 
Yeah. I mean, like Whitaker, there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of guys. Yeah. The top guy. And that, then, that was, I hated that fight too. Just having to see two yeah. guys yeah. go against yeah. each other. Yeah. Like, well, this was funny. So like Izzy and Rob, they fought, um, the second time while, uh, we were filming. And so oh. I, I w- actually talked to Chris about it. Like, because he's a big fan, nobody, right? No, no, I don't think you realize how big of a fight fan Chris is. Really? That's awesome. He loves fighting. I, I mean, he he can box himself. Yeah. Like he's he got posts some, some videos on Instagram. <laughs> sometimes you could tell he like does boxing training. Yeah, and like he was just like, man, I don't know, like. Do you think Izzy's is gonna is gonna beat him again? Like you know, but Rob Rob's like legit. He's my guy. <laughs> All this kind of stuff. I was like, oh. Uh, he is biggest fan, like talks, you know, big fan of McGregor and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, that was that was kind of really crazy yeah. for me because like the first time I met Chris was at my fight, like in uh, oh, UFC wow. 243 in Melbourne. He was, I was going to say he goes to the Australia events when, when he can. Yeah. And I met him out the back and he's one of my favorite actors. I was like, hey, can I have a picture? I took a picture. <sighs> Wish to, I was like, hey, hope you have a great night. It was 10 a.m. in the morning. My manager at the time, Tim, like immediately within earshot, he's like, really? Morning? He's vegan? like, smooth. It's fucking yeah. 10 a.m. <laughs> and you nailed that but one. But now you're oh, in a God. movie with him. But yeah, yeah but Crazy then, life to them being in fucking Vienna, Austria, standing Just there like in costume in a movie, chatting about fights, yeah. I'm like, what is my life? Yeah, no, <laughs> that's, that's really awesome. You're in like full military gear, guns really? and everything. Yeah, that's awesome. Did that like... Uh, that restrict you in the fight scenes? Surprisingly, no. Huh. Like the so the the shoulder pads on that thing, they're like velcroed on. So like I had like a lot of movement, but I felt like a fucking unit. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, I felt like I had like these massive. I'm like, I need because like, somebody's gonna like open the door. For yeah, me. you're gonna go yeah. through like sideways. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it through this door. Like it, it makes you feel so cool because like you've got like the 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 chest plate on, the shoulder pads on. Um, you've got like your, your like regular belts with the boots, with the, the harness for the, for the pistol. And then I'm carrying around a fucking Saga 12. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a th- huge that, gun. That's real. Yeah. That oh, wasn't really? fake. Just the shooting blanks, <laughs> I guess? Shooting blanks. Yeah. I, I, it's a Saga 12 fully automatic shotgun. Oh my God. And I got, t- like here in the States, you can only do uh, semi, which is single shot. Oh, it was fully. Uh, mm-hmm. But wow. I, I was, I was. An able automatic to shotgun? Great. Well, well, semi, like, fully, you could only in America have, like, military yeah. only yeah. has that. Fully would be just, like, it's insane. It, yeah. it, there, it just it's shoots much, much faster. <laughs> That's crazy. It sounds Dude. like some Call of Duty shit. Dude, it was so fucking Did it feel bad. like and you were was. in a Call of Duty game? Really, I really did. That's awesome. I was like, oh, I should get a skin. Oh, my God. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, maybe not now. Oh, my God. They should give you an extraction skin in Call of Duty. That would be cool. Because, like, my ma- like, the mask that I have on, like, mm-hmm. that I, you know, that... They they gave me that picture and I posted it last week. Like, dude, I look like Bane. Yeah, I was that like, would nobody work. knew who I was until I put on the mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're excited for the movie. Comes yes. out on Friday on Netflix. If you're watching this, Friday is June sixteenth. So make sure yes. to look out for that on Netflix. Extraction two, super long take in the movie. A, a warner, as the people in the business call it. Uh, yeah, lot lot of lot of action, a lot of helicopter scenes. Love mm-hmm. that. Um, which I know, like, uh, like some clips of that have been yeah. put out in the in the previews. So just a lot of ass kicking, dude. It's gonna be wild. It sounds like a movie that everyone's gonna need to watch this weekend when it comes out because it's on Netflix. So you got no excuse. It's there you free. go. <laughs>